All right, I wanted to talk today about uh, two uh, British service revolvers. The first one here, this big boy here, was uh, made uh, during World War I. It was the uh, British uh, service revolver for its uh, army in World War I. It was also used, of course, in World War II as well. This is, uh, this is a reproduction of a, uh, a holster that a, uh, uh, an officer would wear this gun with. But this is a nice, a, a nice leather holster that I got for a, a really nice deal. Now, if you look at the back, uh, this is where your belt would go through, and you can actually open this up, and you don't even have to run the belt through this through the loop here you can actually open it up and just stick it on a belt which is nice i like that uh there's nothing like a good leather holster you know and i got this from a company called uh, sarco which specializes in in uh these kind of uh war surplus and replicas uh for old and uh, antique guns and this these particular holsters were made in uh, india and they seem to have done a really nice job about it or with it now this small one here you can see the difference in the size here this small one was the uh is holding the the british uh world war ii service revolver and there's a good story about this gun here but first we're going to start to look at at this one here but first i want you to look at this this holster it's a, it's a virtual copy of this one but it's just smaller for the smaller frame pistol this is very nice 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 holster so now we're going to open this baby up and we're going to pull this out if i can get it open there we go here we go this is a webley and scott mark six revolver in 455 webley that's the cartridge 455 webley what is unique about this particular pistol is the way you check for to, you, where, the way you check to see if it's loaded or how you or the way you would load this gun there's a little lever on the side here that you have to push with your finger once you push that lever you can open it up and you'll notice when you open it up your your ejector automatically ejects any empty cartridges this is a six shooter like a reg, any other red revolver this particular pistol was made between uh, 1915 and 1923. This particular revolver was actually made in the first year of production, 1915. Now, if you look really close, you can see the date of manufacture way down here in the markings underneath the, uh, the patent number. It says 1915. But I don't know if the, the camera wife is going to be able to get that. But you can get some nice close-ups of the pistol itself to see some of the markings on this gun. Hopefully the wife can get this. Uh, now, these particular pistols were used throughout World War I. This, this one, since it was made in 1915, probably saw service in World War I. They manufactured them until 1923, where they were replaced with the Enfield Number no. Two pistol. And uh, once World War II started, they also started Webley also started to manufacture uh, a pistol they called the Mark IV in 38 caliber. And I'll show you that late gun a little later. So you've seen this. Let's try and look at the other side here. Now this particular pistol here is in really excellent shape. The only defect on this particular gun is on this, this left grip, this left grip panel, there's a little crack that has been repaired. Now that's how I got this pistol when I bought it in the 80s at a, at a uh, pawn shop for a couple hundred dollars I think I paid for it. Now, I, as I said, this particular pistol was made, was made in 455 Webley caliber now, many of these pistols, when they were surplused out in the 60s and they were sent uh, into the United States, they were imported in the United States, uh, the 455 Webley ammunition was unknown in the United States. So many of these importers, what they did is they converted these pistols to fire 45 ACP with the half moon and full moon clips. 
Now the problem with doing that is that the 45 ACP is about 20% stronger than the original 455 Webley caliber, I mean the Webley uh, cartridge. So if you shoot 45 ACP in this particular gun, you can loosen up the, the timing on the revolver and you can actually blow up the cylinder. So if you're gonna shoot, if you have a, uh, one of these Webleys that have been uh, uh, converted to 45 ACP, you should never shoot standard 45 ACP loads in it. The other thing is, is that the 45 ACP uh, bullet is a .452 diameter, and the uh, the barrel is uh, .454 diameter, so that you'll you're, you'll have a you have an under uh, undersized bullet that will bounce around in the uh, in the uh, barrel here, and it would it would uh, affect accuracy pretty. It could make the gun less accurate. If you shoot 45 ACP bullets in it. Now, this particular pistol is in the original 455 Webley. It has not been modified. And the, the easiest way for you to tell if one of these guns has been modified is to look at the serial number that is on the cylinder. You see the serial number on the cylinder should match the serial number on the frame. But on this particular gun, you can see that you can read the entire serial number. If this gun had been been converted to a fire 45 ACP, they would have ground down the cylinder, and they would have ground off about half of the uh, serial number. So you wouldn't be able to read the entire serial number on this uh, cylinder. So that's how you can tell because you can see the whole serial number on this cylinder that this gun has not been modified to fire 45 ACP with uh, half moon clips. So, uh, you've seen this particular gun. Now, after World War I, the uh, British military, they, they figured that most of their army from then on is going to be what they called conscripts. And they figured that this particular pistol was a little bit too much for a conscript uh, army soldier to shoot easily. So, what they wanted to do is they wanted to come out with a... Uh, a 38 caliber service revolver that would be easier for troops to shoot. So what they did is they came out with this particular, well, first of all, they went to uh, Webley Scott and Son and they told them, can you design us a new service revolver that's in 38 caliber? Well, what Webley and Scott did is they came out with this. You see the difference here? It's like it's like mother, I mean, excuse me, father and son here. This is the same kind of thing. You've got your lever here. It does the same thing. The only difference is this pistol is in caliber 38 Smith and Wesson. 38 Smith and Wesson is basically a 38 special with a little shorter case. It, the ballistics are basically the same. They originally called this uh, they originally called this caliber 38 200 because the original bullet was a 200 cal a 200 grain uh, lead bullet. Now uh, in the 20s, uh, the the uh, Britain went into the uh, they they signed the Hague Convention, and the Hague Convention basically stated you couldn't shoot uh, straight lead bullets. In a war, you had to use uh, jacketed bullets, so they ended up eventually replacing the 200 grain lead bullet with a, uh, I think it's 145, yeah, 145 grain jacketed copper bullet. That's what they ended up doing. When I shoot this gun, I usually shoot like 158 grain uh, lead bullets in it because I don't have to worry about the Hague Convention, I guess. But this gun shoots this. This gun works the same as the uh, the big one. It's a double action and single action, just like this one. You can fire double action or single action. It's got a nice, smooth trigger pull either way. This is a really nice pistol. What I like about this gun, one of the things I like is it, it has these Bakelite plastic grips that have the Webley script in it. So I, as I was saying, uh, Webley, they went and, and designed this particular pistol and they showed it to the British government. And the British government was happy with this pistol, but they weren't happy about having to pay too much for it. They thought they were going to pay too much for this pistol. 
So what they did is they took one of the prototypes and they gave it to someone at the uh, government-run arsenal, a uh, place called uh, Enfield. That Enfield is like uh, to the British what Springfield Armory was to the United States. They manufactured a lot of their military uh, weapons. They took this uh, Webley uh, Mark IV and they took it to Enfield and they said, can you make a copy of this and make it for us cheaper than Webley can? Well, they did. And what they did is they changed just enough, th enough things on their copy that they could claim it was a new gun. But it was basically a copy of this Webley Mark IV and they called it the Enfield uh, Number no. 2. And uh, the British government, they adopted the Enfield Number no. 2 for their... Uh, for their new service pistol in uh, 1923. Well, Webley got really pissed off because they thought they got robbed, and they sued the government of England for uh, for the development cost uh, for designing the pistol that they said that Enfield stole from them. Well, the the the, the British government uh, eventually settled for about half of what what uh, Webley wanted for the for the uh, the right for the for the development costs. And uh, and they also told Webley that your services will no longer be required because you 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 sued us, you know. Well, so then Webley just wa walked away and they started they started producing these guns and they started selling them to the uh, com on the commercial market. Along came World War II in 1940. And uh, uh, England needed as many guns as they could get their hands on. They walked up, they walked back to Webley with their hat in their hands and said, please, can you manufacture as many of these Mark IV pistols as you can? Well, Webley said, sure, we're English. We're going to make as many of them as they can. They made about 500,000 of these guns during World War II. This particular pistol, according to the serial number, was made in 1941, so it definitely saw service. Now, when... Uh, when Webley started manufacturing these guns, they uh, had to do it in a hurry. And uh, the guns were not finished as nicely as their commercial guns. And they wanted people to know that the reason why these guns look so ugly, the finish was so ugly on them, is because they had to make them uh, for in a hurry for the war. So every one of these pistols that Webley made in World War II, during World War II, they stamped war finish on the uh, receiver. You see, if you can get it, it says war finish. Can you see that? These are all stamped war finish if it was made during World War II. Okay, you get it? It's okay, the camera wife can say yes or no. You got it? She doesn't know. All right. Uh, after the war, uh, Webley continued to make these for the commercial market. A lot of them ended up in Asia in the police forces. Uh, a lot of them ended up Canada, Australia, I assume. Uh, they were eventually surplused, and that's where I ended up getting this. And again, I bought these. I bought both of these pistols at the same time in a uh, in a pawn shop in the '80s. I got them real cheap. These guns are 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 worth some some good money now. This, especially this guy over here, in the original 455 Webley with all the with everything here. This gun's worth a pretty penny. This one's not quite was worth as much. And you also notice that it's missing the little lanyard loop here. I could always get a replacement for it. And there's a there's a very slight crack in the uh in one of the grip panels on the side here somewhere. That's the only real defects in this particular gun. Both of these guns shoot very well. If you look at the uh sights on these guns, you'll see that the blade in the front here is very thin. And it actually happens to fit this notch really well. Uh, this particular gun I've shot from a bench, from a bench rest, and I can get two 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 inch grips groups two inch groups at 25 yards easy all day. This is this is just a, a very accurate pistol. If you use original 455 Webley ammo, there's only one company that actually makes 455 Webley ammunition for this gun. And it's a company called uh, Fioshi. Or some people call it Fiocchi, and it's uh, an Italian company, and it's quite pricey ammo. It's like forty dollars for fifty rounds. What am I saying? They're selling nine millimeter for for sixty dollars for fifty rounds now because of all these riots. Crazy. So either one of these pistols are are, are great shooters. 
uh, the, it's, it's strange that the British, it wasn't until uh, later in World War II that the British started to adopt uh, the Browning high power pistols uh, that, the, uh, that were being made in Canada. But they, uh, they were quite happy using uh, revolvers for their troops. And that's because the British, they saw a, a pistol just like the Germans did. They saw it as a, as a, a last-ditch weapon, something that you would only use in a, in a dire emergency, which is, which is pretty true. You'd, you'd probably use your, your, your rifle way before you'd, use a, you'd start using a pistol. So I just talked about these two pistols here. I, I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, learning about these uh, unique uh, break action pistols that the British had and uh, that's about all I have to say thank you very much